Liz Bicknell is the Executive Director of Memory Training Centers of Florida, where she works alongside a team of dedicated psychologists and social workers to implement evidence-based programs that address the needs of older adults throughout Florida. Liz, thank you so much for being here today. Can you tell us about yourself and the organization? Of course, thank you for having me. So I am from Memory Training Centers of Florida, and we are a memory training group, but what that really means is we're a mental health practice, and we specialize in memory, and we work exclusively with seniors. And what does memory training look like? As a mental health practice, we really don't only focus on memory. We have to look at the whole person because there's many different things that impact memory, which of course include mental health, behaviors, environment. So when we're doing memory training, we're really individualizing for the person we're working with to include those three areas, memory, mental health, and function. So therefore, when we're doing memory training, we have to determine the capacity of that particular individual and then customize something that hopefully is fun and engaging based on their interests and making sure that we're also folding in that mental health piece and that functional piece. And could you demonstrate an activity that might be completed by an individual participating in your program? I can try. Okay, mm -hmm. so Emily, close your eyes. What shoes am I wearing? You're wearing heels. What I color? I think a pointed front. I wanna say a dark color. Okay, what color are my eyes? Um, I don't think they're brown. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. they're either blue or green. Okay, and am I wearing earrings? I don't think so. What am I wearing for clothing? Uh, a dress with, um, you don't have a collar, and you have a couple of buttons. What color uh, is the dress? I think it's a navy blue. Okay, you can open your eyes. You did pretty well. Navy blue Oh, dress. the shoes I got wrong. It's the a dark color. It's, a, <laughs> it's like, a nude shoe and I have on just studs, so that was hard to notice. But that's an example of where you paying attention, mm -hmm. which is the foundation of memory. You've got to be able to pay attention mm -hmm. to be able to take in the information. Mm -hmm. And then your recall. Were you able to recall the details? Because you've been looking at me for a couple of minutes mm -hmm. and clearly you missed some details. Mm -hmm. So... That's one example of looking at someone's attention and their short-term recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would pay attention more here to people. I have blue eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I guess they're not, they didn't stand out for you. Yeah, okay. they look a little bit green-blue to me, so I, I couldn't <laughs> You knew tell. they weren't brown. Yeah. So your memory's mm -hmm. intact, Emily. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the shoes, that was interesting. Yeah, so that's just like a quick... I think my mind maybe got mixed up with the navy blue on your dress with the shoes, because I was thinking like navy blue shoes. Right, you were thinking, what would I wear? I would never wear a nude shoe with a blue <laughs> dress. <laughs> um, but I could also, if we were to look at short-term memory, um, so how long do you think short-term memory lasts? I would say maybe half an hour to an hour. Okay, half an hour to an hour is a great guess, but the answer is 30 seconds. So one thing people misunderstand about memory training, I'm doing trivia, I'm doing crossword puzzles, I read. Those are wonderful, but that's all long-term memory work. Anything that's short-term memory work has to happen within 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if I were to, let's demonstrate a short-term memory training activity. I'm gonna say a sentence, you're gonna repeat it right back for me, okay? Mm -hmm. Mary Smith lives at 72 Country Road in Concord, Massachusetts. <laughs> All right. Mary Smith lives at something something Country Road, Massachusetts. Okay. That was your immediate recall. Now mm -hmm. let's see what happens after 20 seconds. Okay, mm -hmm. ready? Now pay attention. Remember, paying attention mm -hmm. to the foundation. John Maple lives at 733 Craft Road in Hawaii. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do ten. What did I say? John something lives at. <laughs> yeah, I already like. <laughs> 
It's hard. Yeah. Memory training, it can be challenging, but the idea is short-term memory is what gives everyone the most trouble, and that's the one we never practice. So you mm -hmm. have to really take in that information. First, you immediately recall it, then you got to give that delay to build that pathway and that skill. Memory mm -hmm. is skill-based. You've got to practice, and it gets better. Okay, so it's something you build. 100%. get better at. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Does your brain also fill in information for you? Like the way it filled in the color of your shoes. It's like I was so confident it was a dark <laughs> color. Absolutely. Our brain is always working to make sense of what we're seeing in our environment. It's called the encoding process. So mm -hmm. as you're taking in visual information, as an example, and it doesn't, maybe you didn't see it clearly, or maybe you didn't focus long enough, your brain's gonna create something that is the most likely. Mm -hmm. So that is why eyewitnesses are so unreliable. If you're taking in things too quickly, you don't get a good look at them, you're not able to focus, maybe it's stressful, that encoding process is going to say, well, what would have happened in the past? It relies on preconceived ideas, bias comes into play, mm -hmm. and you're gonna create a memory that is not accurate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How can we support family members who are having a harder time remembering? Education. I, I really believe that most people don't understand what really is memory loss and, of course, how can you address it. So there's two main things. Number one, mental health and memory loss are very intertwined. And that, I think, is one of the more innovative things we've tried to do is to create this fusion of dealing with someone's mental health in tandem with what they're experiencing from their decline. And family members can support their mental health by just allowing them to talk to them, recognizing the challenge they're experiencing. They're aware of their own decline and it's very hard. Imagine watching yourself lose the skills that you used to have. It's extremely yeah. upsetting. And of course, the world is a lot to deal with. And especially if you're also dealing with maybe loss and financial issues, medical issues, you might have to have moved from your family home into a community and you weren't ready for that. And there's so much to deal with in this stage of life that people are depressed and they're anxious. And that's the number one and number two cause of memory loss. So family members being able to understand that they're going through all of these things and provide that support could be tremendously helpful. And then they need to get their own support because it's hard to watch your loved one go through that. And so their support groups and just becoming more familiar with what is dementia, what can I do to help cue them or prompt them and support them. And you mentioned dementia. What's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? So dementia is an umbrella term. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. So there's lots of different types of dementia, Parkinson's and Lewy body, and there's, a, there's just general dementia. And then Alzheimer's is one of those types of dementia that tends to be very progressive and fast moving. And what words of encouragement or advice do you have for someone experiencing memory loss? And what words would you share with a family member? There's two things that I think people miss in terms of how can they themselves prevent or at least stabilize some of that decline. Number one, focus. <laughs> Take the time to actually look and listen because that's the first stage of forming a memory. And so many people, you know, we're not focused. We're on our phones and we're walking around and we're doing a million things and we're thinking of other things that are going on in our lives and we're not really getting good information. And so you think you're forgetting, but in fact, you're not getting. That's what I love to say, because you're just not getting the information. It's not that you forgot it, you just didn't take it in. So focus, you know, they say, take time to smell the flowers. It's true, you really need to be present in that moment. And number two, if you're feeling stressed, does anyone not feel stressed? <laughs> Manage the stress, because stress is that number one cause of memory loss. And if you're having a stressed response, to all your daily irritations, someone cut me off in traffic. Oh my gosh, the Starbucks line is so long. Oh my goodness, they brought 12 items into the 10 item lane. I'm lost and where's my phone? Those things, if you have a stress response, you're actually creating your own memory loss process. So deal with the stress and focus. And how can individuals learn more and stay up to date on the latest information with your organization? 
Well, our website um, is the best source, which is memorytrainingflorida.com. And we have a blog on there so people can also write in questions and maybe see if there's other families experiencing the same thing they are and try to find, you know, some information and share with the community. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to share? The only last thing I'll leave with is if you are seeing changes in your memory, if things are happening more often, it's more disruptive for your life, don't wait until it gets so bad to do something about it. Prevention. That's the key. Great. Well, again, right. thanks so much for coming. Thanks, Emily. It was great to meet you. Great to meet you too. Thanks. Okay. If you're enjoying this show, please subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts.